and because I've got the Facebook and the YouTube up here uh, to see when. Okay, we've popped up on YouTube. So we're there on YouTube right now. How exciting. <laughs> but we haven't popped up on Facebook. So let me just... I'm going to pause that. I'm going to stop that for a minute. Okay, right. This is looking better now. Okay, so we are in Facebook and YouTube now. Brilliant. So, oh, oh, one thing I have to remember is I have to press an extra button on Facebook, which I've now pressed. So we are about to be going live on Facebook. Okay. Okay, we're now live. Lovely, 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 lovely. So, hi, Becky. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much for joining me. And you're going to be telling me all about how you help grown ups to get creative. Just before we get on to that, just as a little introduction to anybody that hasn't watched any of these before. Um, this is Claire from Creativity Found. And each week I each week ish. I like to go live on Facebook and YouTube, YouTube with members of the Creativity Found Collective like yourself so that the audience can find out what they do and how they can help other grown-ups to find a creative outlet or even to sustain and grow their own small businesses so the creativity found collective it's a promotional and a networking membership for artists and crafters who share their creative skills with grown-ups through workshops or kits or online courses however they do that and it's also a membership for business support enterprises who use their expertise to help those artists and crafters to grow their businesses and hopefully to do more of the arty and the craftying and less of the business eating, that kind of thing. So we promote their offerings on the website, connect them with a network of like minded business owners. We have monthly meetups. We support each other in all sorts of other ways. There's an online resources pack, things like that. So if anybody listening today is interested in the Creativity Found Collective, simply visit creativityfound.co.uk slash join us. That's where all the information for that is. There are links in the notes for both of these recordings to Becky's page at creativityfound.co.uk and a number of other places as well. So just scroll down and you can easily find those links. But first, let's speak now with Becky. And I'm going to ask you, Becky, how do you help adults to get creative? Well, um, there's several different ways that I do it. Uh, the, the, the biggest one, I suppose, is I teach a monthly class at the Makerspace, which is uh, this amazing, uh, it's an old pub that was taken over and now has a beautiful cafe and they have lots and lots of different creative classes. And I teach um, a mosaic class there once a month or twice a month if my class gets full uh, filled up which it does quite often actually um, and that is all abilities uh, so you could come to the class as a complete beginner with no idea of what you want to do just just you know a willingness to have a go uh, or you could be um, advanced and you could bring a project but you just might need somebody else's point of view or so sort of technical support um, so those classes are very much based around the individual rather than a whole load of people following you know all doing the same mosaic mirror or all doing the same thing um, so it goes at your pace um, and I try and make it a lot of people say that oh, they'd love to have a go, but they're not creative. And I think the thing with mosaic and quite possibly lots of different art forms is you don't have to be creative to make something beautiful in mosaic. Um, I like to liken it to cooking. And with cooking, you just need a few good ingredients and you really can't go wrong with your supper. And it's the same with Mosaic. I buy in for the class and recommend people sort of, you know, if they were buying their own tiles, uh, I buy beautiful tiles, not the 
entry level ones. You know, I buy beautiful tiles, cost a little bit more, but you're going to go away with something amazing because even the tiles alone, you, you can't go wrong. And it doesn't have to be mosaic, doesn't have to be, um, you know, a, a thing. Like you don't have to be able to draw. It could be a study in colour. It could be a study in the sizes of your tiles. Um, it could be, you know, a contrast in glass and ceramic. There's there's so many options which are non-scary, great fun, incredibly mindful. That's a huge factor about mosaic. It's an incredibly mindful um, occupation, pastime, hobby. Um, so I, I, I've been teaching this particular class for over a year now and it's gone from strength to strength so I'd like to say that that's a that's a very fun place to um uh get people you know being creative um another thing I do um is on, on my own Instagram page and it's mainly Instagram I do do it a bit on TikTok a little bit on Facebook, but it's mainly Instagram, where I will show my own progress with work. Um, so I'll put step by step um, pictures of what I'm working on, and I'll share the highs and the lows, um, mainly the highs. Um, but you know, things go wrong with all of us. So you know, I'm not scared to, you know, put that in, you know, that if it goes wrong, you just take the tiles up and you, you know, start again, or what have you so i i hope that inspires people as well that they don't just see the the end piece they see everything that's gone in to making a piece and um so yes i'd say those are the main places and just by talking about what i do as well which i hope inspires yeah yeah i like that you say you can actually change it if you go wrong i think it that that feels like um that wouldn't be the case and like you would like ruin a whole thing by putting one tile in that you yes. don't like <laughs> yeah you... <laughs> absolutely yeah you you really can i i mean I, I say to people you know stick as you go so sometimes people will they'll be they'll be too scared to stick things down so they'll have at the end of a class well this rarely happens because i'll tell them to stick down as they go but it could be that you've got a whole load of loose tiles because you're too scared to stick them down and then they might get jogged about as you move your piece of work because the class is finished um because i say you know stick it all down and you know we can lever it up if it doesn't work we can change it also if the grout color is wrong um we can do things to change that at the end there's there's so many tips and tricks you can do to make a piece of work spectacular so yeah yeah lots of things to do there i think you must be the perfect person to learn from from that point of view because i've always been amazed with you and colour and skin tone, for example, because the actual artwork that you do are often people, especially the big yes. ones, aren't they? Yes. Um, and how you get skin tone across. Is oh, it's just... hard. <laughs> it's hard work. It's yeah. hard work. <laughs> and I really hope that um, I, I share enough of that, that to let people know that it's not easy. So if, you know, if people want to do that themselves, I mean, in October at the Makerspace, I'm going to be doing a, a weekend portraiture um, sort of masterclass. And it's it'll be for intermediate and advanced people, you know, who've been working with Mosaic as, as a hobby or even a profession. Um, but skin tone, you've got, if you're working with just sort of fleshy colours of... of um, ceramic tiles so i use ceramic rather than glass so we get the lovely sort of powderiness of skin um you've got about four different colors to do your whole face with which is a really small palette um and i'll put them down the tiles down i'll i'll think oh it's all going great guns it's looking amazing i'll then put it you know stand up the mosaic on its you know upright because you have to work flat and then it'll be oh that's wrong oh that's wrong oh that's wrong and then I'll take them up and um 
this can go on for about a week just do, <laughs> just doing a small bit my nails are gone i'm in the fridge constantly thinking what can i eat you know if i smoked i'd probably have cigarettes in every finger but luckily i don't smoke um <laughs> it the reality is it's frustrating but also the reality is keep going keep going keep going and then it will happen it will happen but you have to just not give up and not be not be scared to tackle something like skin tone i mean it's constantly thrilling if not very frustrating <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh and um, why th through teaching and the experiences you get teaching other grown-ups why do you feel it's important that grown-ups have these chances to try new creative activities i think in in our busy lives um we don't have many moments to 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 take for ourselves um you know many people you know part of say families and you've got children or you've got dogs or you've got children and dogs and partners and demanding jobs and food shops that need to be done and washing that needs to go on and it can just get so intense and repetitive and i think it's just really important to take time out for yourself and not be on a phone not not be um you know in front of a screen just to sort of look inwards actually rather than on a screen or just day to day just 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 moment to just breathe look in and just do something that is going to be incredibly pleasing the end result you're going to be amazed by um and just taking a few moments to 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 just quiet contemplation um laying some tiles down um, i i mean i can i only do mosaic so i am a one trick pony i can't talk about other other to disciplines in the art world but mosaic is it's so calming apart from when you're doing skin <laughs> but when you're doing other things it's like at the moment i'm doing a portrait of um jane burden who is jane morris who married william morris and i'm working on the hair and that's just for lots of little cuts just very repetitive just little cuts i'm just adding them and even just doing something like that it's you, you you get some beautiful music on you listen to a podcast you listen to a book it's it's you can multitask with with this sort of thing and um it's it's just time to breathe it's 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 time to take for yourself to to own and you may have really pressing things happening around you but the moment you start and the moment you allow yourself an hour two hours you know stick to it do it and you will you, you you'll you'll benefit from it there's there's you know no doubt about that i think it's it's um you know lives are just so hectic so busy that i think we need to take time out and we need to just reclaim it for for you know for us for our mental health i mean that's a huge thing actually um it's i mean i've i've seen how the art of mosaic can benefit people with mental health issues i've worked you know with many people with mental health issues um and i've just seen what it does um and not even mental health physical health i've worked at the john radcliffe um on uh the look, many of the children's wards i mean lots of them are covered in mosaic that the children and their families have made um and you know when i worked on the children's cancer ward it was um, a time for the children and their friends and siblings and family to um, to work on something that was just so colour orientated and calming, and it just took away the conversation of the illness just just for just for an hour, and it was a joint activity and something beautiful was created. I got them all making gorgeous fish. And you've got the shape of a fish. So it's always going to be a fish because the base is a fish. What you do on the inside can be anything. You can cover it with flowers. It's still going to be a fish. Um, you can go random shapes and sizes. It's still going to be a fish. It's still going to look amazing. And um, 
I just think it just takes away the big, the the, the, the big stresses in life sometimes. So I think you know if we if we can do that and take that for ourselves, um, or allow somebody to to come into your environment and, and teach you something new, I think it's hugely hugely beneficial. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> And um, you're a member of the Creativity Found Collective. And, yeah. um Why do you think it's important as well for you as a creative business owner to, yeah. you know, have those kind of communities that, that you can join? Well, this is all really new to me, as, as you know. Um, so I've spent 20 years as a professional creative um, in my studio, working by myself. Um, re enjoying it because I'm really good at working by myself or you know doing community arts with people but my business has been sort of me myself and I and so I'm just learning I've, as you know as well as I do I've got a long way to go with this but I'm just learning how to um, the benefits of being with other people other creatives um, which I hadn't actually appreciated before and so I'm just I'm just at the tip of the iceberg, sort of just letting other people into my world. Because I thought, you know, mosaic artist, you know, I just, you know, poodle along doing my thing and didn't really appreciate that it's incredibly important to be connected to other creatives, whether they're a painter, a sculptor, a ceramicist. Um, it doesn't matter. We're all in the same boat. We're all, we're all, um, trying to make a living which is is tough in this climate being a creative in this particular climate is is tough um and you know any tips and tricks that we can pick up from each other is is huge um and just talking to other people and and i found you know having recently joined the um become a member of the oxford art society that um I sort of jumped in head first and it's just been a few months but you know I've met many people there as well and it's just I'm getting inspired in in areas that I didn't realize were inspiring or could inspire me um I'm understanding more places to show work or um more opportunities for your work that I had no idea before. Um, so I'm really, the penny is dropping <laughs> with me that um, it's, it's quite vital actually to be, to be in a community. I mean, I've, I've chugged along quite happily, but the learning curve at the moment is huge. Um, I'm, yeah, it's, it's good to be in a community of creatives, but, and this is, this is, I'm telling myself this as well as other people, I have to give myself time to, um, to sit down and allow this to happen as well. Because sometimes you get so busy that you miss some emails or you miss, like you do the, 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 uh, the meetups, the online meetups, which I need to join one because I haven't joined one yet. Um, you know, life does get busy, but we need to, we need to stop and, we need to do it. I, I <laughs> as well as some of the people, need to do this because I'm just beginning to realise that um, how important it is to be connected to to like-minded people um, in you know in a creative community, but also on my doorstep, you know, within the county, maybe. You know, this is also important. Um, so, yes, I think, you know, it's, it's good to, you know, be a lone wolf and all of this, but I think it's better to be, you know, connected to people. Yeah. I mean, I felt the same. And I think maybe also we have children of the same ish ages and with them being much older and less dependent as well, it gives you more time and scope. And, and, and also because when the children are growing up, you're, doing a lot of socialising through children yes. and then when they don't need you to take them to places anymore yes. you start to not see so many people I certainly did and as yes. a freelance worker 
I work from home on my own. And yes, uh, I I realised a bit further down the line that it was actually a bit lonesome at times. So yeah. I definitely um, ag agree with that. And also the the um, the chatting can be about anything. You know, it mm -hmm. you can get some value from being with other people that might have no relevance to you know it's not necessarily going to earn you money you just think like oh that's something I've never thought of and I never yes. thought of that if I hadn't been out and about talking to other people which is always what I have benefited from from starting to make the effort to go out and talk to people yes, to meet yes. people <laughs> so you've yeah. already talked about October which that one sounds like a really interesting one yeah. um and about the latest work that you are working on for yourself what yeah. else is in cahoots for the future <laughs> I've got I've got several really exciting things the big thing which is taking up a lot of my time uh, at the moment is I'm part way through writing a new mosaic book for Bloomsbury Press, um, oh, which know. is yeah. yeah. So it's it's um it's all consuming at the moment because the deadline is really really looming, um, and so I th it's it's going to be around sort of twenty five thirty thousand words. Uh, probably about 250 images in the book projects all abilities um but i want to put into the book um bits that perhaps other books don't have like i want to do like a big chapter on portraiture um so not not so much a step by step because it, that would be a very difficult thing to teach a step by step on how to do a portrait but i want to go through how you could do hair in, in glass, you know, short hair, long hair, um, could be animal portraiture. Um, how would you do horses fur? How would you do shaggy dogs fur? Um, you know, eyes. Um, so I want to do a big chapter on that. Um, and also I want to do a chapter on community arts and public arts. So my degree was in public art and design, and I've done a few public art pieces, lots and lots and lots of community arts. Um, and I, I get emails from teachers quite often saying, um, uh, we want to put a mosaic up in our school. We've got a very small budget, so you know we can't employ anybody. Can you point us in the right direction? So I'm sort of thinking if I, you know, I'll just do a chapter on it um, so I can point people in the right direction there. Um, so I'm not sure when that's going to be published, but the deadline is looming. So that's that's busy. So that, that'll be something for everybody, you know, from complete beginners who want to do a project where there's no tile cutting. So you don't need to even buy the equipment to um, how to do mosaic hair, how to do skin. <laughs> are doing skin in a portrait um so that's that i've got oxfordshire art weeks coming up so i'm doing that with two other artists ian roxborough and amanda bond and we are sites 170 171 i think i'm 171 i think and 172 <laughs> and we're in sanford on thames and that's going to be the 11th and 12th and the 18th and 19th of May. Um, so that's going to be lovely and that's that's great. I'll also have work, I'll be working on something so people can come and see. So it could be that I'm working on the big portrait of um, Jane Burden. If I'm not working on her, she'll be on display there. <laughs> um, and that she will be, so she'll be in the book as well, but she'll also be on display at the um, Oxford Festival of the Arts. They're creating a festival hall and um, there's going to, and she'll be up for, I think probably about a month maybe in at that. Um, and that also ties in with a lecture from somebody who's written a new book on the Pre-Raphaelites. And as she was a Pre-Raphaelite muse, um, that will all go together uh, beautifully. Um, and then in September, I'm teaching um, uh, in Spain. So there's, uh, yeah, so in Andalusia, in, um, there's still places on this. And if it should be on my website, if it's not, I'm going to put, make sure I'll check after this, get it on there. Um, in these amazing cave houses. So a friend who lives out there um, 
lives in a cave house and rents out these cave houses. So Andalusia can get up to 40 degrees in the summer, but the cave houses are, they just keep the temperature really cool and beautiful. And she, uh, Mandy, who owns these places, is incredibly tasteful. So they're like these chic cave houses. They're amazing. Um, middle of Andalusia, lots of lovely wild swimming around. She's got a little plunge pool, um, lots of animals. Uh, and I'll be doing a four day teaching course there. Um, so yes, yeah, lots, lots of lovely things on the horizon. That's really exciting. Yeah. So people can learn from you in the future, from your book, from the makerspace, but yes. also from a lovely, lovely foreign place yes. in the sun. How delightful. That's, oh, one more thing. Mm. Uh, at the beginning of May, I'm doing the Henley Art Trail, and that's at the makerspace. So that's the the, the, the bank holiday weekend at the beginning of May. Um, I'm not sure of the exact date. So Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, bank holiday beginning of may so it's probably something like i don't know fourth fifth and sixth something like that of may so i'll be there i'll be working on jane burden again because i oh if again if she's finished she, she'll be on display that she'll be there with me in one capacity so yeah may very busy and yes other lovely things have brilliant i know another uh collective member potter debbie page she'll be on the henley arts trail as well oh fantastic yeah. uh well just one thing about the book don't forget yeah. Becky, yeah. That when it's published you need yeah. to sign up for the public lending right oh yes yes <laughs> yes extra pocket money there yes <laughs> Absolutely. Every penny helps I, in the creative this, world. Last year, I earned 50 quid for books that I've worked on years and years and years ago that had my name on the front cover. That, wow. you know, just because people are taking them out of the library, it's like money for nothing. It's lovely. So, yes. yes. And they're, so in all, up yeah, for that. <laughs> they're in all the libraries. And so, yes. So, I don't, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, thank you so much, Becky. That's been really, really oh, lovely sure. to talk. I just want to wind up by saying that this lovely live stream, which has worked really well today, almost, almost first time it worked, one and it's a half got, times. Because I had my tech support um, son <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorted out for me beforehand. <laughs> yeah, well done, Felix. Thank yes. you. <laughs> Um, so this has been live streamed using Riverside, which is what I use to record um, all of my podcast episodes. If you're interested in doing any kind of live streaming, video, audio recording, have a look. Use the link in uh, the show notes here. Uh, that's a little affiliate link. So if you do sign up for a paid account, then I might get a little bit of money. Um, I've also got links down here to Buzzsprout, which is the people that host my podcast because they're super duper as well and as i mentioned earlier you can find a link to uh becky's page at creativityfound.co.uk in those notes as well so you'll be able to find out everything you need to know uh for the future and start mosaicing <laughs> yes <laughs> thank you so much becky pleasure thank you so much claire it's been brilliant